So I want to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for the Mining Industry Human Resources Council's launch of the 2021 to 2026 National Youth Mining Career Awareness Strategy. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from Ottawa, which is traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. While we meet from across Canada on a virtual platform, we acknowledge the importance, <clears throat> excuse me, of the land that we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. We have with us today David Coletto, founding partner and CEO of research and strategy firm Abacus Data, along with Richard Jenkins, Abacus's Director of Public Sector Research. They will provide data on youth perceptions of mining from polling they conducted with MIR as part of the development of the National Career Awareness Strategy. We also have with us Leslie Wolcott, MIR's Director of Inclusion and Career Development. She'll present the national strategy and outline how it'll attract and develop highly qualified youth to the industry. And I'm William Meyer, MIR's Director of Marketing and Communications. I'll round out the webinar by showing you a new career awareness campaign and resources to help youth see mining as an innovative, challenging, and rewarding career choice. Please feel free to write questions in the chat box. We're gonna be taking questions at the end of the presentation. And uh, if we happen to run out of time at the end of the hour, we're gonna be providing our contact information for you at the end of the webinar. So I will now pass it over to David. Well, uh, thank you, Will, and, and good to see you, uh, both you and Leslie. Thanks everyone for joining us today. My colleague, uh, Richard and I will, will take everybody through uh, the research we did on behalf of MIR um, at the end of 2020. And before I get into um, the presentation, you know, it, 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 it it's interesting, I think, that we, this research was done in the middle of a global pandemic um, at a time when I think people were uns unsure still how long this would last. Um, but we've done similar work uh, prior to this with, with other sectors who were all facing the same challenge, which is how do you make uh, a career in the mining sector, in your sector, uh, appealing and relevant to younger generations as, as generational change happens in the workforce and um, the need to recruit into the sector and, and keep people engaged and, and happy um, and feeling fulfilled becomes even more important. I think the, the relevancy, the urgency of this, uh, of the work that Mir is doing around building a national strategy, I think it's even more important today, uh, given a lot of the, the changes that we're likely going to experience in the workplace, whether that be in an office setting or not. And I think increased pressures on sectors and individual employers and government uh, policymakers as well, who are all trying to figure out how do we fill the skills gap, the labor shortage in, in many sectors and, and mining is certainly no exception. So my hope is that the, the research that Richard and I uh, did together uh, gives you some insight into how young Canadians are feeling about work uh, how they feel in particular about the mining sector and, and demonstrates both the, the challenge that exists, which is why this strategy is so important, but also the opportunity that's there for, for those in the mining sector, for those supporters of mining who wanna see Canada's mining sector strong and sustainable and growing long-term, how to get there. And so I think the, the data provides somewhat of a blueprint and a, and a guide forward uh, for the sector. So just very briefly, um, a little bit about the survey that we conducted. This was a very large uh, survey, both in terms of the number of questions we explored, as well as the sample size. We interviewed 3,000 Canadians aged between the ages of um, uh, 15 and 30. And the survey was done uh, in December of 2020. So um, it, it is taking into account, at least partially, any impact that the pandemic might be having on people's perceptions about work and, and uh, young people's views of, of the sector. But I will say we've done, as I said, similar work for, for, the, for the trucking sector, uh, for the electricity sector, and all of that um, aligns with what our findings here are in terms of what young people want out of work. But as I said, I think there, this is an evolving space. And so it's really important to keep in mind that that those priorities are unlikely to change, but the order in which they are and the weight in which some have uh, may as, as the world kind of comes out of this pandemic and we go forward. But um, this is a large sample, which allows us to, within the fuller report, understand differences across gender, 
um, racialized groups, uh, different regions of the country, particularly those living in cities and, and larger urban centers versus those in more rural and remote communities. Um, and we were really able to get a, a good sense of, of some of those differences and, and what might be driving them. Um, I'm going to start by, by taking you through the, just the, the, the key takeaways that I want that we think are important for you to think about. And then Richard and I will, will take you through much more of the details um, in terms of a, a summary of what we learned. But in my mind, there are three key takeaways. Uh, the first is asking yourselves the question, um, everyone involved in this sector, everyone who wants um, mining in Canada to be successful at recruiting young people in it need to ask, can mining align itself with the career aspirations of young people? And what we tried to do in this survey is understand what those are. And as you might expect, there are some that are table stakes, like you've got to be able to provide good pay, uh, job security, uh, and benefits. But what we know about younger Canadians is, and as I always say, the bar is being raised in terms of their expectations around things like work-life balance and the need to feel that the work they do every single day is fulfilling. That is confirmed in this study. Um, the second key point, and I don't necessarily think it would be a surprise to most people, is the mining sector is not viewed as positively as other industries and sectors we, we, we tested in this study. Um, it, it is a not well-known and well-defined sector. It's often um, uh, isolated or, or remote in, in a sense that people, most Canadians don't experience uh, mining. They experience it every day in the, the, the technology they use or the, the products that they rely on, but they don't often see how it's uh, produced. They don't know what goes into it and the range of jobs and opportunities that exist in the sector. And so that's something for us to, to, to understand. But the good news is there are interested young people, um, in particular, some of the key target groups that I know the industry is looking to recruit, women, um, and in particular, indigenous young people across the country. And the framing and positioning of the sector of mining of the future and the role that the minerals and, and metals and, and other uh, materials that are um, mined from these operations provides a great opportunity to connect with young people where they are and in, in understanding where they wanna go. So um, again, some, some, some tough news and challenging news, but certainly opportunities uh, to grow. So Richard, I'll uh, hand things over to you to take us through some of a little bit more of the details here. Okay, great, thanks, David. You know, the, the number one thing that probably everyone who works ultimately cares about is pay. And it's not surprising that uh, when choosing a career, that's the thing that comes out most for people. But right after it is lifestyle and work, life balance, uh, job security, and that sense of what David said, you know, that sense of fulfillment out of, out of your job. Um, and the combination is the thing that uh, puts the challenge on new on industries right now to figure out how they can deliver on all four of those things. And, and I will say, Richard, as, as often people joke about millennials and Gen Z is they do actually want it all, right? And I think this is a, a natural evolution in the expectations of workers that we've always raised, as I said, raising the bar. Every generation raises it slightly higher in terms of um, not just pay and the expectations around what pay should be able to do for me as a, as, as a lifestyle, but the kind of work I do. And so when you think about pay, lifestyle, job security, and, and that fulfilling, interesting, challenging work, um, that's a high order for any employer, whether you are a high tech company in Waterloo or you're a mining company um, in Labrador, Newfoundland, um, that, that's a real, real challenge. But what, what, what you need to figure out is how do you connect the dots for people as, as, as they consider the career and why it's attractive to them. And one of the things that we that really provides a way to try to make those things come together is the fact that there's such a strong interest in among young people in being active in solving problems. That that sense of solving problems and being active in, in the, of, of your career is part of that sense of uh, own purpose that a job can offer. Um, and so you can see here that uh, among young people, we have a real like focus on being active, on solving problems. 
And then a real split between people who, you know, really want to get dirty and people who don't. Um, so it's a good balance. And so the, the point here too, is that there's, there's something for everybody in the industry and, and really positioning it as an inclusive place, whether you want to work uh, at a mine or operating heavy equipment or working at an office or in another type of workplace, I think, you know, thinking about what it is people seek is important. And, I, and I'll just reiterate, Richard, I think the solving problems piece uh, is even more important today in the middle of this pandemic as we get out of it, because it highlights the value that work can, can deliver. And so if you're somebody who's really seeking to make a difference, then solving a problem, whether that be you know, the role that mining plays in helping us get to a net zero economy or the role that mining plays in connecting people around the world or the role it plays like copper, for example, in, in making surfaces um, less resistant to, to spreading bacteria or, or viruses goes a long way in peeping, people understanding why would I wanna enter that sector? And so these are, these are all areas um, that, that become important drivers. Moving on, Richard. Yeah, and you know, this is a list of sort of industries we checked in terms of positives. And there's like two or three points here I think that are worth making. First of all is that really big 39% of people who are neutral about mining. Um, that is a big hole that can be filled with uh, a whole different set of impressions. Um, I'm not saying they don't have any impression, but they're not really positive or negative. And so that really is an opportunity. Um, the fact that 25% are positive about mining suggests that there is a core group of people who, who are interested and who are available. And mining doesn't need to get everybody on board. It just needs to get enough to deliver on the, on the HR needs forward. And the, the, and the other thing about this is that there's a really interesting fact that a lot of those industries at the bottom, construction, transportation, logistics, manufacturing, oil and gas, they're all kind of related that people who like one tend to like others. And, and it's really interesting to, as we do later, a little bit unpack how mining has some advantages over some of those other industries in terms of delivering on things. Um, we, could, we could create a separate chart, you know, David, on sort of a hierarchy of, of things that come out of the ground and, and diamonds and precious metals are like the top of the list and, and coal and potash and stuff are at the bottom. And um, that's the kind of thing that is imp impacting this kind of impression grid that puts mining uh, at the bottom. And I mean, this just underscores, and, and if you look what's at the top of the list, right? It's not, I don't think it's a surprise that in December of 2020, you know, almost all young people had a, a, either a positive or neutral view of, of the healthcare sector, given its, its importance uh, that it was playing in, you know, supporting people being affected by, by the pandemic. And so when you think about the, the dual role that, that needs to happen, and I think the work that, um, you know, the uh, mining, the Mining Association of Canada is doing um, to, to improve the overall impression of the sector. It means that, that partners across the board, whether you are a, a mining company, whether you are an association, but also policymakers and, and opinion leaders. Um, I think the challenge that Richard highlights related to, to any of the, what I'll call legacy sectors, right? Natural resources, manufacturing, transportation is you know, they don't, they aren't, they aren't talked about very much. Um, and often if they are, they're done in a way that doesn't necessarily bring a positive viewpoint. And so there, there, there needs to be a broader conversation about the value that mining plays. Um, and then you need to get very specific about the kinds of jobs that exist and why um, they're, they're, they're appealing and why they would be appealing to, to different people. All right. Moving on, Richard, and we'll get this. There we go. Some, some subgroups though. So differences if, here. yeah, and, and if 25% if are positive overall among uh, those under 30, it's, it stands out a couple groups. Yeah, there's a bit of a bias uh, towards men being more positive than women, but the really one that really stands out to me is that the very high uh, 
positivity around indigenous people who identify as indigenous uh, and to some extent visible minorities as well. They're at least at or around the average level. Um, and the other thing that's interesting here, and I think to the need um, to get the message out about what, what mining is all about, is that there's a real age difference here that, that younger people have much more um, negative impressions of mining than older ones. And so what that suggests is that when you're in your teens, you're not seeing the opportunity perhaps, and you're only capturing the sort of negative uh, aspects of mining. And that, but then as you enter the workforce, you maybe in, in your higher education, you start seeing how mining can fit together in, in the future and have more positive. So it's a really interesting um, element of the, the subgroups here. This is my favorite, Richard, go for it. And you know, yeah, we, I, I sort of said this a little bit already, you know, when people, we ask people just to give us their gut sort of comments about what mining is. And, you know, the number one thing was dirty, but there's some stuff around what comes out of the ground. Um, there's some stuff around being difficult work, dangerous and unsafe and pollution and minerals. But what you don't see here is high tech. You don't see here some of the other elements of what um, the future could look like. Um, and so it's really dominated by um, more sort of negative ideas or words uh, and that really reflect the legacy of what mining, uh, mining was. And, and the challenge really is that when you look at a list like this, even the ones we highlight that aren't necessarily overtly negative um, or aren't tied to people who have negative views of, of the industry, is, is to what Richard pointed, is there's not a lot of, um, you know, opportunities or points of, of differentiation. And it's the challenge, again, that every um, natural resource sector faces, whether it's forestry, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's uh, any extractive industry, is this perception that you're taking and you're not, you know, contributing. And, and I think that's uh, something that's, again, wouldn't surprise probably most people on this webinar today and those watching, but underscores um, just how deep uh, these, these perceptions have become with, with those youngest in, in the country right now. So the good thing is that there's enough of millennials and Gen Z that left uh, that younger cohort that actually believe two important things, that mining has good pay and there's lots of jobs. And those are two things that are um, are, are significant, start delivering on um, the core thing that people are looking for, which is a good paying job. Um, and, you know, yeah, healthcare does better on that, but not, not crazy better. And this is the data here. And, you know, definitely true, probably true that the mining sector has each of these things. And look at the top three four things that are, are on that list. Good pay, lots of jobs, advancement opportunities, work is interesting and fulfilling. Well, those are the four things that are the top things that people are looking for in a career. And so in some ways there's, a, there's a, enough of young people who actually believe mining can deliver on this. Um, and so in that sense, there's some credibility uh, already built into the, um, to, the, to, the, to the culture around what mining could do. Um, it's, you know, Obviously, it's not perceived as safe in comparison, especially in comparison to other things. And I mentioned other sectors. You know, the one thing that good pay and benefits speaks to advantage mining has over manufacturing or over um, transportation and logistics. Um, here, mining is seen as much more of a um, you know good pay and benefits place than say some of those other similar types of legacy or historic. Uh, industries. One of the things uh, we did in this survey that we didn't we didn't share the results in this this, um, this this summary report that we're sharing with you, but we asked uh, respondents how they their parents would react if they came home and told their mom or dad that they are going to join uh, a, a firm that that works in the sector. And I always think that that's an important question for for all employers to ask in the broader sector to consider is like what does it say first about who I am that I work in the sector, and then how are people in my sphere of influence gonna react? Because so much of our behavior, particularly young people, right? 
consider what life is like as a 15 year old today, that decisions that I make where I you know, go, if I could go out and eat right now, where I go and eat, where I go to school, what I wear is being constantly compared and shared across my network. That's far more public than even when I was, was, was growing up. Thankfully, I didn't have Facebook or Instagram uh, when I was in high school and most of university. So that world of being constantly compared means that the, the, the image of the sector has to be strong. You have to, you have to enable people to def you know, defend the choices they want and the safety challenge that you see here on this slide is a real one because that's the one that parents are going to push back on, right? If they also believe that working in mining is unsafe, then when someone comes to them, their kid comes to them and says, hey, you know, what about this as an idea? That resistance, that, that path to a yes becomes much more harder to achieve. And so that's where, you know, clarifying um, the, the safety record of the industry and, and the work that's being done to, to, to improve it consistently. And it's a great record that just the perception is that it, it is less safe perhaps than other types of jobs. You know, and, and when you positivity about round mining to actual consideration for jobs, you go from sort of 25% in the positive and you go down to 11% who probably or definitely would end up in the sector which is still a group of people who are available, what I would call available. Um, and that extent gets even to start moving to the might consider. Um, certainly there's rejectors, uh, you know, the 42% who say they, they, no way, um, but there's enough people there that if you can get that message out, uh, you can get to them. And, and if you look at those other sectors, the transportation, manufacturing, they're not, they're in the same boat really. Um, and, and we've seen that from some of our other work is that there's enough people there, but it's just a competition for those people. And there's also um, a real need to make sure you make connect and get people who could, who are interested to convert into an actual uh, career path. For those who are rejecting, this is a sort of a reflection of the, the, the words that, that define mining. Right? The, the number one thing is too dangerous. Um, it reflects the fact that the mining doesn't do as well on safety. Um, it's also, so it's just a blanket, not interest, which is fine. Um, bad for the hard work, too far to travel, have to move. One of the things that certainly the mining sector in terms of perceptions struggles with compared to some of the others is that there's a, an idea that the jobs aren't where I am or where I want to, where, where I want to be. And uh, that gets a little bit reflected in those people who are, are rejecting the notion of uh, working in the sector. And I think, you know, Richard, we did some work uh, earlier this year uh, on an unrelated kind of topic, but given all the conversations about, you know, people being open to moving to more rural or remote locations, you know, outside, out of cities, now that, now that you know, the, the pandemic has created more license to, to work remotely or, or to do so virtually, and we asked Canadians who were interested in perhaps moving to a more rural community. And we then said, what are the essential things you need to have? And the number one thing, the thing that more people said was essential was not funny enough access to a hospital, but was access to broadband internet, right? And so that, um, that to me, and it was particularly high among younger, uh, younger Canadians. And so the challenge you have is not just with the actual jobs and the actual sector, but the lifestyle that necessarily comes around it. And so advocating for expanding broadband access to rural and remote parts of the country, all the things that you're already doing needs to be part of that strategy because people need to know that if I'm going to move you know, to, to Labrador or to Northwest Territories or to more remote parts of the province or, or part of the country, that I can still do a lot of the things that I enjoy. I can still stay connected. And so that creates opportunities, I think, in a, in a world where people are much more open to that and housing affordability for young people is, is the top issue right now. Um, but it also creates challenges if, if, if I can't get a good connection and I can't do the other things that I kind of uh, feel are, are really important. You know, and one of the things that we, we did was we asked some people to, to contemplate, to think some messaging around what might, some images of mining that aren't 
what mining used to be. There, there are ideas around positive environmental impacts on high tech, to high tech and access to uh, the, the inputs, the, the metals, base metals that we use for our technology. And you can see that 33% say they're more likely to consider a career in the mining sector based on hearing that environmental impact statement. And it's still pretty high, even for um, drivers, which suggested that there is an opportunity here to uh, message around um, what the mining of the future would look like that can resonate with people um, and, and help shed the notion of the, the, the mining is associated with coal and, and being dirty and being unsafe and being difficult. Um, these are ideas that, that are more positive, um, and, but also I think realistic. So Richard, and so, yeah, go ahead and wrap up here. Go ahead. We'll go for it. Okay. I'm not going to read everything on here because you guys can read, but I, I wanted to just say that we know that mining has the, some of the same issues that other sectors are facing. Um, it's not viewed as positively as some of the, the really, um, the sexy industries high tech. And the, the association with the oil sands and coal certainly are, and, and safety create challenges, but there really is an opportunity here because there's enough people who are interested in mining and would consider it. And it's even more important, I think, that that interest and consideration is higher among some of the uh, represented groups in mining, I think, um, like Indigenous people, like people of uh, minorities. Um, and yes, it's more overrepresented by men and people living in rural locations, but I think that's that's just a partly a reflection of some of those things that um, we know about people interested in mining. So, I, so yeah, I think that sums it up nicely. Um, Will, I think we're, we're, we're through this. If, if folks have uh, questions about this research, um, I know uh, um, Mir has, has more, more details on it, but I'm happy to take any questions, uh, Will, if, if you'd like to, to, to lead that part of the, the Q&A part. Sure. Thank you, David. Um, we were going to be taking questions at the end, but I figure... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, continue then. We can yes, yes. Gonna say, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> uh, after, after the polling, the research is presented, uh, Nick, Leslie is now going to go over uh, the development and what the national strategy is all about. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? And are you seeing what you're supposed to see where you are? Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to have so many people join us and happy to, to be with you this afternoon. It's my pleasure to share uh, Mir's National Mining Career Awareness Strategy with you today. The, uh, the strategy was funded by Natural Resources Canada and it aligns with uh, the Canadian Minerals and Metals Plan, particularly focusing on the goals related to attracting highly qualified personnel to the sector and showcasing mining as an excellent career choice. I know that the strategy is going to be shared with you after the uh, webinar. Um, we do encourage you to look. I'm not sure if Will's going to put a link into the, into the chat at this point or just share afterwards. Well, the plan is we'll be sending a, a thank you email to all attendees. It includes uh, PowerPoint information as well as other supplemental information for today's presentations. Great, thanks. So I thought that we'd get started by talking about sh sharing a bit of history with you. Uh, and this slide gives a bit of an overview around that. With support from Natural Resources Canada in 2019, Mir developed a blueprint for a national mining career awareness strategy. And that helped us to understand the context, challenges, and some solutions associated with attracting youth to the sector. The research uh, done as part of that blueprint identified that significant effort is required to raise awareness of mining careers amongst youth if we are to meet forecasted industry demand. And that blueprint provided a little bit of a roadmap for the creation of the strategy that we're launching today. So move forward quickly onto the fall of 2020. 
when Natural Resources Canada again supported, supported MIR in developing the second phase in the creation of the strategy. And there were a few steps involved with that. Uh, primary, firstly, we worked on an inventory and a map of stakeholders uh, within the fields of mining, education, and career awareness. The stakeholder mapping uh, exercise involved conducting research into mining career awareness, as well as identifying, categorizing, rating, and analyzing stakeholders more broadly. We worked with a rating uh, that looked at interest in attracting youth to the mining sector and influence over youth career awareness. We learned uh, significantly, we learned that most of the career development and education organizations with a high level of influence on youth career awareness have really no direct influence with the mining industry. So this suggests to us a very strong opportunity for us to increase, increase influence over youth career decision-making by building more partnerships with career development and education organizations. The work, uh, just moving forward, the work of identifying and mapping stakeholders helped us to inform the strategy's development. And that inventory will, uh, will continue to be used to identify new partnerships and enable us to reach new audiences and implement uh, the programming uh, and promotion of mining careers that we're looking uh, forward to doing, particularly uh, focusing on youth, uh, having additional focus with youth on diverse backgrounds and interests. Another, another couple of other compelling pieces uh, involved in the strategy's development was looking at labor market information from the mining sector stakeholder engagement that included industry, post-secondary education and indigenous communities, and current research into youth career awareness from other fields. All of these things went into the development of the actions that are set out in the strategy. The results of the youth polling also contributed to the strategy. And then at the same time, we were receiving results of exit surveys from students and supervisors who were involved with MIR's gearing up program on work integrated learning placements. The information from those uh, surveys was also integrated into the strategy's development. The last piece in, uh, in terms of the strategy's development was about engaging folks in what we were thinking were the right elements to include in the strategy and how to, how to frame those. So on that note, the Gearing Up Steering Committee, uh, which guides our student work placement program, provided input to the development of the strategy and validated a draft in March. Mir's board of directors also had an important, uh, had an opportunity to comment on the strategy in March. So we're grateful to both the steering committee and the board for providing their input and helping with, with the development of the strategy. That's a lot of background. We're moving forward on to some of the a little bit of the concept that helped us to guide the strategy. This uh, career development continuum was shared uh, with us by the good folks at Mining Matters. And so shout out to goes to Mining Matters. This framework helped uh, to guide and inform our work and to understand kind of the trajectory of career development. Um, you can see that there is overlap across the buckets of career awareness, development, career awareness, exploration and preparation. And we found it helpful to think about how the strategy would support career awareness, as well as complement work in the areas of exploration and career preparation. We set out to develop a national mining career awareness strategy that attracts youth to the sector by providing a focused vision and directions for the future. Um, the tagline, which we worked a fair bit on, uh, transformation, innovation, and diversity, reflects the key strategic elements of the national strategy. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to, to walk, uh, walk us through that uh, together. The transformation piece relates to perceptions and awareness, reflecting the sector itself as it automates um, and the changing nature of the sector's relationship with stakeholders, particularly in the education and career development arenas. Innovation calls on us to engage in new ways of thinking about and implementing career awareness aimed at and as well as involving youth. Finally, the diversity element that we 
brought into the thematic areas for the strategy uh, reflects on a few central elements. The diversity of thought that will support innovation and transformation, uh, the building a more inclusive and diverse industry culture and workforce, and related, related to that, engaging a more diversified field of stakeholders, particularly in the area of youth career awareness. This slide gives you a little bit of a sense of the guiding structure for the strategy. Our vision that youth see mining as an innovative, challenging and rewarding career choice was invor informed by our, uh, all of the good work that I spoke to you about earlier. And you can see from this center cog how the vision is supported by the principles of equity, empowerment and evidence-based approaches. These are critical uh, in terms of just making sure that we have a well-considered approach to, to career awareness uh, throughout the strategy. And finally, you'll see uh, in the strategic objectives that we're going to talk about that research, awareness, and engagement are the action-oriented pillars that guide, uh, that guide, guide us in our objectives. So this slide provides a little bit of an overview of the strategy, integrating the vision, principles, and, princ and pillars of action with the five, five key objectives. I'm going to walk us through those quickly in a few moments. I'll speak to the strategic directions reflected in the strategy and also highlight areas where work has been done or is ongoing. Here's what we're really excited about, is talking to you about opportunities for collaboration and involvement. I'll not, I won't touch on all of the activities identified in the strategy, but we'll urge everyone to access that, as Will said, um, in order to get a full sense of the actions that we're, we have identified in the strategy. Our first objective uh, in increasing youth engagement is to establish a cohesive approach to attracting youth to the Canadian mining sector. On this slide, we've identified a few of the actions coming from the strategy. The starred actions highlight opportunities for collaboration in the near term. Um, for example, the sharing of information about initiatives and successful practices is critical to youth career awareness. It's an element of the strategy that will benefit from collaboration, engagement and information sharing. And I believe that you'll hear more from Will shortly about how to, how to work on that, how we'll work on that. Our next objective in transforming perceptions is to raise awareness among youth and key influencers about career opportunities that mining offers and the sector's role in environmental sustainability, social responsibility and technological innovation. Uh, the polling confirms the importance of this strategic direction and we've begun to do some work as you can see on this slide. And again, you'll see the identification some, of some opportunities for the near term. Uh, our objective in reaching younger students is to increase mining sector and mining career awareness in elementary and secondary education. Again, we've made some important inroads here, but want to do some work on um, integrating mining career awareness into public education. Uh, thanks to th some, a great collaboration with Mining Matters, we're well positioned with uh, some knowledge of career awareness resources and stakeholders that are available to us, as well as uh, opportunities within provincial curricula for integrating mining career awareness into classrooms. So there's lots to be done there, but we've got a good uh, foundation from which we can build. Our objective in building alliances between industry and education and education is to increase enrollment in mining related programs and align post-secondary program learning outcomes with the skills requirements of employers. This is a big important, this is a large, significant and worthwhile undertaking. I've heard in my short time uh, working with Mir, I've heard uh, people speak of this quite a bit and I'm surprised at the extent to which, uh, happy to see the extent to which this is being discussed. We've begun some work that will help us in this area and through our work integrated learning program gearing up, which many of you uh, will be familiar with. We have now placed students in over a thousand placements in collaboration with 237 employers in pretty much 
every uh, province of Canada. There's a couple of exceptions and we're working away on that to make that happen. Um, this means that we're already actively engaged in promoting mining related programs and careers to students. And we're hopeful that we can continue uh, this work and expand on it uh, with your collaboration and the support of the federal government. We're also excited about the prospect of working with partners to develop more relationships with student co-op and career offices. Just getting close to wrapping up, our objective in promoting the last element of the strategy is promoting our objective in promoting diversity in the workforce is to increase the participation of underrepresented groups within the mining industry. Um, our focus is on enhanced participation that facilitates connections, networks, diversity of thought and perspective that catalyzes the innovation and transformation that we that I mentioned earlier and that's woven throughout the strategy. On this note, we're excited to share that with the support of NRCAN, Natural Resources Canada, MIR will be facilitating 25 green job placements uh, for youth in the coming months. And these placements are for youth who have completed school, be that high school, college, or uh, university. And in that program, there's a strong uh, focus on involving youth from underrepresented groups. Again, if you're interested, please reach out to us. We are hopeful that we continue, we can work together with organizations involved with mining sector career awareness to influence a consolidated, collaborative, uh, cohesive and complementary approach to, to our efforts. Um, through today, we'll talk about how to connect. And I think some of the follow-up information that Will's going to share with you will, will highlight that. So thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Next up, I'll be going through a new career awareness campaign and resources that we have developed stemming from the polling data, the research and the research around the national strategy and uh, its objectives. I will now share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that because um, you've disappeared from my screen. So Leslie, do you see yeah, good. screen? Yes. Perfect. All right, so as I said, uh, this career awareness campaign and resources that we have developed is stemming from the polling and the national strategies development. Um, we are looking at it as a means to um, create a campaign and some tools that'll help you see mining as a rewarding career choice. The campaign itself is anchored by a, a new career website and with today's launch, a corresponding social media campaign is also underway. So again, in line with what you've heard today from David, Richard and Leslie, uh, the campaign goals are to raise awareness on the profile of mining, support Canada's mining leadership in their HR efforts and make mining a career of choice of students. So our key audiences are therefore you know, high school and post-secondary students, industry education champions, the current workforce and those looking at second careers, Indigenous communities, and the general public. Given this, the campaign aims to, number one, change perceptions. We want students to look seriously at mining-related programs, uh, and we want Canadians that have negative perceptions to reconsider mining's value and become unlikely champions. We also want to get the word out about the, um, the industry to those who, in, as you've seen in the polling data, uh, don't have uh, a thought one way or another on the industry. So we want to be targeting key audiences strategically by being flexible with uh, developing various versions of our creative. Uh, that broad brushed approach that we want to take uh, will hopefully you know, target those audiences that I just mentioned that haven't considered a career in mining before and therefore wouldn't be telling their students or children or friends to think about mining in the first place. And we want to demonstrate that Canada is a mining leader, specifically in environmental sustainability, indigenous partnerships and technological innovation. So not only do we want to change perceptions about what mining looks like, we also want to demonstrate that joining Canada's mining industry is joining a winning team. So uh, how do we get there? 
as you've been told, uh, the polling and research tell us three communications areas that can be addressed to improve the mining career brand are around, uh, you know, inclusion, and diversity, gender stereotypes, uh, safety, and environmental impacts. Top messages that would make people likely to consider a mining career respond directly to making it more environmentally friendly, technologically advanced, with new and highly skilled jobs. This all boils down to students having mining on their radar when they're considering education, those in skilled trade programs recognizing mining as a safe, high paying and exciting, professionals in various disciplines seeing the industry as one where they can make a difference, uh, marginalized communities seeing the industry uh, walk the talk on inclusion and diversity, and indigenous peoples seeing mining as a valued partner for their communities while also offering um, rewarding training and employment. So with that in mind, we developed a value proposition for the campaign. I won't read the whole thing, but at the top level, that the mining industry is essential to our way of life today and to creating the world we want tomorrow. Now, the large value proposition as a whole is supported by subsequent uh, messaging around how you can make an impact by being part of an industry that provides uh, the raw materials that society needs. You can be challenged with continually solving problems and using the, the latest tech. You can choose adventure with your job potentially taking you across Canada or around the world. You can feel at home in a large diverse community network. You can be the change because we depend on a diverse workforce and you can earn great rewards with high paying jobs, professional development and career advancement. So the campaign itself again is more than just careers. It's about the promise of mining with the fact that you can work in this amazing industry. So from there, we needed a, a campaign theme that summarizes the value in a short tagline. And that theme is, we need mining, mining needs you. This shifts, uh, this immediately sets out to shift um, perceptions about mining. Number one being that mining is essential. The campaign enforces this by introducing facts like without mining, we wouldn't be able to transition to a low carbon economy. Uh, the concept then moves to an invitation to those seeking a career where they can make a difference. To support the campaign um, and the national strategy's goals, as mentioned, the social campaign is being launched. The social strategy is critical to reaching our audiences and the supporting visual approach is modern, welcoming, includes a diversity of people and ties into mere branding, as you can see from the social image on your screen. We have multiple images uh, to support our various messaging, as well as uh, you know, highlighting special days of the year, like holidays, Mother's Day, Earth Day, et cetera. So please check out Mir's social channels on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and for the hashtag mining needs you. So success for this campaign means improving public perception uh, indicated through polling uptake by partners and increased collaboration on career initiatives and increased enrollment and interest in mining programs and work integrated learning placements. This is all in line with what you've already heard today about the polling and Leslie's discussion about the national strategy. So with all of the information about um, the development and the metrics of the campaign itself, let's have a bit of a deeper look at some visuals. First up is our initial campaign video. It's an introductory video that focuses on the we need mining aspect of the campaign rather than drilling down, so to speak, uh, in future and shorter videos that are going to be focusing on shifting perceptions about what people think of when they think of mining and how mining needs you. So here is the video. Hey, we need green energy to power our homes and vehicles. We need healthcare innovation to save lives. And we need new technologies to keep us connected, to build a safer, greener, more connected world. We need mining. Are you looking for an exciting career where you can make a difference? Mining needs you. Now, hopefully the video played fairly smoothly for you. Um, and with that, next up is, as you can see, miningneedsyou.ca, our new website for the campaign. 
Our goal here was to create a website with a modern design and youth we spoke to in our focus group said that the design really spoke to them. The home page's top banner, uh, which is the image that you can see here, it's actually a uh, video loop that conveys the need for minerals and metals and that mining needs you. And this is supported by the top messaging that aligns with the campaign's value proposition. Subsequent pages on the website uh, delve into why we need mining for materials needed for green energy to medical supplies and telecommunications. They also describe the modern industry with focus on our key messaging around environmental sustainability, technology, safety, etc. Other pages talk about the benefits of working in the industry, focusing on the value propositions, key messaging around exciting work, financial re uh, rewards, and so on, along with content on who works in mining and how you can get into the industry. And the website also features an interactive career pathway where users can select various uh, various careers and see where they might lead. Uh, it provides a snapshot of the job description of each uh, position, and that snapshot links directly to the full job description on a web page. And the full job descriptions are also available in a full career book. The full career book is available on miningneedsyou.ca and it's available for download. It contains essentially all the information that's on the website in one source and the detailed job descriptions, as you can see with you know, job entry requirements, compensation, job prospects, and what type of people are attracted to each role and what it's like to work in the, the position. The website also features a general knowledge quiz about mining that we're gonna be updating uh, twice a year. We'll be updating the questions. Uh, and we're also looking to expand on the resources section of the website in collaboration with stakeholders. So with that, as I've said, miningneedsyou.ca is now live. Moving forward, we're looking at expanding and promoting the website and campaign in various ways. Uh, on top of regularly updating the general knowledge quiz, we're going to be creating a separate career quiz that allows users to see where they might fit in the industry based on their educational levels and preferences. We are gonna be ensuring that we have a presence at industry events, distribute posters and materials, conduct company, school, and student outreach, and collaborate with you, hopefully, the mining stakeholders on resources, cross-promotion of mining careers, and other potential opportunities through the National Career Awareness Strategy. So that's it for the campaign presentation. But before I wrap things up and see if we have a minute or two for questions, I do have one more announcement to make. 2021 marks Mir's 25th anniversary. We have several activities planned for later this year, as I believe uh, Mir came into existence in November of 1996. So most notably, we are announcing a new scholarship program for post-secondary students in mining related programs. Mir will award 10 $2,500 scholarships to promote Mir's anniversary and mining career awareness spread over five fiscal years. The first two scholarships will be awarded in 2021, 2022. This totals $25,000 in scholarships over the course of the program that Mir will be providing to post-secondary students. Applicants can apply uh, by providing a short video under the theme, I chose mining, mining chose me. This ties into the main campaign theme, theme explaining why we need mining and why mining needs you. So I, I chose mining because it XYZ and mining chose me because I'm XYZ. That way we can also use the, ver the videos to further promote mining careers. So more details about the program will be made available soon on our website, mir.ca, as well as miningneedsyou.ca. So as mentioned, we encourage you to reach out to us after the webinar to discuss any opportunities for collaboration. Uh, Leslie and my email addresses are on screen. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and see if we have time for a couple of questions. We have four minutes. So in terms of questions, I have a few here and I will start off with a question for Richard and David. Uh, when you were speaking about the results from the impactful messages coming from people who responded to the polling, were those people that don't see mining as positive that were responding to that? That was everyone. Um, so whether they were positive or negative, 
Um, there is obviously we can break that out by those different groups, but what you saw was the overall picture. And the report we broke it out by those who had a negative or neutral impression, so we could see which ones were more effective with different groups. So, and there is some difference. Thank you. Uh, another question for you, based on uh, your presentation. Do you think that if we were to do the, the polling, the survey again, and replace mining with mineral resources industry, um, indicating that you know extraction of minerals and metals plays a part in that, do you think that would you know, garner different results? Um, actually, when we, we, we also do some polling for the Mining Association of Canada, and they often, you know, do what we call uh, split samples or, or see how different people react to different ways of framing it. We don't actually find, you know, that kind of framing has a, has a big uplift, a slight tiny uh, increase. And I think that's just reflective of when people, um, you know, just think of minerals um, or resources themselves, they, th those same images come to mind. So it's not as easy as just, unfortunately, flipping uh, the language, but I do think Nicole, who asked the question, your thinking is is on the right path, and that is how do you, you know, and that work that that Will and his team are doing is how do you reposition and reframe the industry so so people's first instinct isn't to think dirty, but think opportunity, think future, think all the great things that mining enables them to do with their lives and the impact that it has. But uh, it's a great question. It's something that I know my colleague Bruce Anderson, who does a lot of work uh, for the association, uh, has explored extensively. All right, thank you. Uh, one little quick one for me. Do you have the study and the career guide in French? Yes, all of our materials are being or have been developed uh, in English and French for this project. The website and the career book are available right now, uh, live and in both languages. Another question that we identified, starting building alliances between industry and education in every province, and what about the territories? The answer to that one is yes, of course, the territories, national uh, initiative here. So working with as many uh, stakeholders and those that will collaborate with us as possible. And seeing if there's one last question. Well, what I'll do is actually, because we're coming up to the end of the hour, we're gonna make note of all the questions that are remaining. Uh, we'll provide answers to them in the email to all of you so everybody can see them. And I just wanted to uh, wrap things up uh, at the top of the hour here to say on behalf of all of us at MIR, thank you to David and Richard for being with us to share the polling data. Uh, and thank you to the audience for taking the time to be with us that I want you to have a good rest of day and we look forward to working with you to promote mining careers. As mentioned multiple times, we will be in touch with you after this webinar uh, and you will probably hear from us more than you even want to as we look at uh, collaborating together on, uh, on this initiative. So I thank everybody and you'll hear from us soon. See you. See you, bye everybody, thank you.